Hello my soccer universe. Well, where to start? That was quite an eventful day yesterday. A lot of dragon slaying, I have to say. Um, also made it hard for me to choose what jersey to wear and then I remembered, well, you know, South Africa won the Rugby World Cup. I watched the game. Uh, it was quite impressive. It was a, probably one of the most brutal games of rugby that I've seen. Um, I also have to say, I mean, South Africa was for large portions the better team over the favorite English team. But there was a late in the first half a sequence where England could have taken the lead and I've never seen such a goal line stand. That was pretty impressive what the South Africans put up there. An inspirational speech by the captain at the end. Yep, had everything. So yeah, I'm celebrating South African rugby uh, becoming third times world champions. Now a level with New Zealand and yeah, England doesn't get their second World Cup title. I have to say I was in the South African camp. Uh, for rugby, I'm all Southern Hemisphere. So yeah, that's how I am. Sorry, there are Engli any England fans worried. But I have to say the England home jersey. I really like this with the um, uh, St. George's crosses on the collar. Uh, I have to say the England jersey was the better looking one. That's for sure. And yeah, it was a great final. So yeah, no... Soccer jersey today, I could have chosen a few, but I, in the end, I thought no. It was a dragon slaying um, Saturday. And it could have, the carnage could have been even worse um, as well. Uh, where to, really where, where to start? Let, let's start, well, what I watched, let's do it that way. I started with Napoli, uh, Napoli at Roma, which honestly was an awesome game. Um, especially in the first half, I... Then in the second half I had a parallel with the Bundesliga and there was so much happening in the Bundesliga that it was hard to follow it all, but it was an awesome game in the first half. Zaniolo giving Roma an early lead, Roma really pushing forward. Then um, a handball that in play you didn't see it, but when you watch it that um, Kai Hyun is actually putting his shoulder on the, on the front to play the ball. That, I have to say... Um, has to be a handball called. I know that in the run of play you don't see it, but that really has to be a handball called. Uh, Color steps up, but Merritt saves it. And that kind of uh, flipped the momentum towards Napoli, who then had numerous chances. Uh, one Smalling, uh, I think it was a shot from Isina that Smalling just saves uh, in front of the line. Milik just curls it that much past the post. Then within two seconds, Napoli managed to hit the post twice. Should have been at least a 1-1 one -one at the half. No, it's a 1-0 for Roma. Second half, as I said, I didn't follow it as closely anymore. But... Um, Roma again came out flying. You thought that Napoli was going to eat them. It was exactly then the other way around. Roma actually was the better team and then they get a, um, another hands panel penalty that is put away for a 2-0. Then the game was halted for a while. I didn't quite get why. I read that it was some not racist chance necessarily at the player, but um, that the Roma fans were mocking the Napoli fans or some stuff like that. I really didn't get it. And I have not found much uh, evidence, even the highlights that didn't show it. That kind of broke Roma's game. And then Napoli came again and Milik, almost out of nowhere, gets a goal. Makes it 2-1. Uh, Roma though can hold on. Kleibert hits the bar. So that's the third time aluminum is being hit. And last minute, there was a yellow red for uh, Roma with a free kick from the box, but Napoli cannot get a draw, which they probably would have deserved. So it's an awful string of uh, games for Na Napoli. After the win in Salzburg, two draws, one loss, and they completely lost touch with the top of the table. So at the same time, I was watching the Bundesliga, and boy, was there lots of stuff happening. Uh, goals, 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 goals. Especially in Leipzig, 8-0. Leipzig over Mainz, it was 5-0 at the half. And I think when I flipped in, it was, I think, 15 minutes or something like that played. It was already 1-0 one, one and then... <clears throat> I think Timo Werner scores 3 and is this 3, something like that. I don't rate him highly, to be honest, but that was impressive. Um, Bayern at Frankfurt quickly goes pear-shaped for Bayern. Um, uh, red card, last man for Boateng right outside of the box and then Frankfurt gets two goals re relatively quickly. Uh, let's pull it up. Uh, Kostic and Sao. Lewandowski with a very 
great individual effort actually manages to pull one back so it's 2-1 but second half it's all um a frankfurt they quickly get uh, 3-1 hinterega makes it 4-1 pacienza uh, makes it 5-1 that's a famous win for frankfurt um borussia dortmund wolfsburg was a game there first i was all wolfsburg they even hit the bar there was not much coming from Dor dortmund there was also a referee change um i think he pulled his hemi and then uh, second half, once Dortmund makes the goal, it goes all one way. And I think it was uh, yeah Azar and then Rafa Guerrero and Götze with a penalty late on makes a 3-0 win. Um, another pretty good game was Leverkusen against Gladbach. Um, I have to say those Gladbach uh, away jerseys in blue, they, they look so much 80s-like. I actually like them. Um, Gladbach takes the lead quickly, Volland uh, equalizes, but then um, Thuram... In the 42nd, gets the lead for Gladbach, who then hang on uh, really by a hair. They get the win, they're now in first place, and therefore the first time, first place is clear because all the other teams lost points except for Dortmund, but Dortmund was already three points behind. So uh, it's actually the two Borussias on top. Uh, Freiburg gets a last-ditch equalizer in Bremen to make it 2-2. And then uh, the other result of note, the first Berlin derby in the Bundesliga that I can remember. I think it's the first one. Union with a semi-contentious penalty wins it 1-0. Uh, a game marked by pyrotechnics being thrown from the Hertha block. Oh well. That was the late game. After the Bundesliga, I then it was it was really a crazy day. I didn't know where to watch yesterday. It was uh, going so I actually then put um at the same time, and it was, oh, I saw probably most of the second halves. Um, Liverpool at Aston Villa, when Aston Villa already had a 1 0 lead from a, I think it was a free kick. Um, and not, and still, Liverpool was dom dominated. Uh, Teresa Gay made it, the Egyptian. Uh, Firmino had a goal disallowed. And so I watched that one. Can Liverpool turn it around? At the same time, I knew Barcelona Levante. Uh, Le um, Barcelona got a penalty that Messi converted. And the action first was in Valencia, where Levante, within 10 minutes, scored three goals on Barcelona. Uh, Barcelona completely fell apart. Messi then seemingly had pulled one back, uh, but the initial pass was offside. I would have loved to have this there, because there was a clearance where I think Messi's through ball hits the shin of a Levante defender. It Bounces at the face of a Le another Levante defender into the path of Messi, who then can slot it home. It was kind of a slapstick goal, for sure, did not stand. Uh, but yeah, Barcelona doesn't find a, a way back, so that's the second dragon. After Bayern, it was Barcelona. And would Liverpool be added to that uh, tally? Nope. In the last five minutes, first in 87, Robertson gets the equalizer, and then Mane in stoppage time gets the winner for Liverpool. For Liverpool. So no dragons late there and in addition Manchester City has a similar way they were also 1-0 down to uh, Southampton Southampton actually redeeming themselves a little bit and then um, two goals uh, laid by Aguero and Carl Walker get the win for Manchester City speaking of Manchester the third dragon to be slain but it's not a big dragon it's a baby dragon these days was uh, United losing at Bournemouth um, other games in England, I just watched the highlights. I think the Newcastle was my personal. Newcastle absolutely dominated West Ham in the first half. Uh, should have led by a larger score in 2-0 to make it 3-0 West Ham puts uh, two back late. So uh, that was remarkable. Uh, Arsenal only managing a 1-1 at home against Wolves. Arsenal also, I, I don't like how Arsenal is playing. Uh, they will drop Chelsea. 2 one over Watford. Um, Abraham and... Um, Pulisic scoring, uh, De Olufeo puts one back late, so that was England more or less yesterday. Um, so we have already three dragons, uh, two and a half dragons down, and it remained that way, but there were still some remarkable results. At six o'clock, I put on Bologna against Inter, where Inter largely was the better team, uh, had even goals disallowed through VAR, rightfully so. Bologna then takes the lead. Uh, was a nice shot and I then jinxed the game. 
I was quiet, 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 and when it was like the 75th or something like that, I said to my wife, I'm not saying anything here, I'm very quietly sitting, and I, I have to say, yes, it was a wonderful day. The girls were behaving. Uh, I could watch games on two screens, and then they were cooking pizza for me in the kitchen. Oh, I loved it. Uh, for once, I really felt special at home. It was beautiful. Um, had a great day with the family, uh, each one enjoying their own thing, but we were really together as well, so it was actually quite nice. Yeah, Bologna had the lead, and then I said, I'm not saying much, um, I don't want to jinx it. Who is playing? Bologna Inter. Uh -huh. Lukaku scores the equalizer. And then a penalty given for Inter in the... 90th minute that I have to say Bologna had the same thing and I know it angered me quite some I know there was contact but that contact didn't fail Martinez Martinez took that contact and he knew that with this decision the referee can only give a penalty and he didn't decide before and this is again the one thing where VAR they will not overturn such a decision Lukaku steps up 2-1 Inter. Yes, I expected it. I was not gutted or whatever, but, you know, Bologna probably could have gotten something. Inter was the better team. Um, same time, a little bit later, Sevilla against Atletico Madrid. You see, it was I, I, I was going... It was stressful <laughs> to watch that, 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 that many games. Sevilla took the, uh, the lead from the first shot, but then it was from that moment on, I, Atletico took over. I think I had a goal by uh, Diego Costa disallowed, then Morata makes it 1-1, and then they get the big uh, through penalty, a big chance to make it 2-1. Uh, nope, penalty is saved by Bacilic. I have to say the first goal by Sevilla. I didn't like how Oblak uh, looked on that one. And then, yeah, um, the late games. Let's stay in Spain, because there was another uh, Madrid-Sevilla matchup, where Real Madrid, they got an early goal through Hazard, that was disallowed, rightly so, due to offside, and then, and then Betis hung on to get the draw, so almost another dragon slain here with Real Madrid. Um, Real Madrid had the bet of the game, but I didn't see that many, I mean, they had a few chances, especially late, they, they probably should have scored, but uh, also Betis then got a little bit outside of their shell. Uh, it ends nil-nil, which basically is a blow for Real Madrid because they could have taken first spot, but nope, Barcelona is hanging on there to the, to the lead despite having a loss. So it just gets a little bit tight on the top in Spain. And then was the small matter of the tour in Derby, uh, where, yeah, Juventus... It was early in trouble uh, and needed uh, need to be a few saves because Torino really went at Juventus. It was only when Ronaldo then late in the second, uh, in, in the first, late. I, I always think in quarters and then I say second and I mean late in the first half. Uh, Juve actually then had chances to take take the lead. There was a call for a penalty on the Licht again with his arm there, which if the referee sees it, he could have given it. He, Clearly, he's taking the arm away, but yeah, it's one of those. Again, if uh, VAR will not necessarily say uh, it is one, so uh, that that was that. Uh, and I suddenly feel sorry for the Licht because he was so uh, dominant for Ajax and at Juve, he still is not going there. But then Iguain comes on and has first a good chance and then assists the goal by the Licht right after the corner. And so the Licht gets his first um, Juve goal. And I have to say, yes, there have to had to be a few more good saves. I mean, Sirigo, the Licht had already a goal this allowed from Sirigo, who had a one wonderful save. There was another one of his, but also on Juve's side, there needed to be some saves. That, that derby was a good one, but in the end, I think Juve with some trouble, but they just get the job done. And that ended my evening, but it was a lot to watch. Um, there was actually another Dragon Slain, but it was on Friday evening. PSG losing at Dijon. I haven't seen any highlights there. So, but yeah, but it was a Dragon, a really Dragon Slain. Lots less action today. I will probably focus on my two favorite teams, Lusk and Milan. But there's also a really nice game with Sociedad and um, Granada. 
playing at almost the same time as the Milan game. So I'll probably will watch that one too. Uh, what else? Yeah, I mean, there's Leicester City. That is probably worth watching. There are some nice games, but nothing really as must watch uh, Italy. I think there's uh, Parma Fiorentina that also, but that's the same time as Lusk. So not sure how I will do. But let's see how those games are going. Well, my fandom is split after Sunday. Didn't watch too many games. I really watched only two games with, I don't even want to say full attention, because uh, we actually did some work on the balcony. And yeah, kids were a little bit around. Was not They were not as nice as on Saturday, let's put it that way. So I got most of the last game, but uh, there was not 100% full attention to it. And then I watched some other games, but my fandom is completely split. Never in my life. Never would I have thought that Lusk and Milan switch places for me. For me, Lusk was is the hometown team that you have to support. Unfortunately, they're not always all the, all the great. In fact, they're more losing than winning. And Milan is the team that does all the winning. And now it's completely flip-flopped. Lusk goes from strength to strength. Milan finds new ways to lose. Let's put it that way. Um, it... Uh, Milan hurts, to be honest, but let's talk about that uh, later uh, when I actually can summarize that game. Um, first of all, I, the first game that I was watching, I was actually going in, to, in the second halves, um, uh, was at the same time Crystal Palace and Leicester, and then um, on the smaller a screen. I had Hellas Verona pressure on. Uh, Crystal Palace Leicester was uh, most of the time kind of an open game, especially in the first half. Um, in the second half Leicester took over. I did not like that Leicester plays in black. I understand why they played in black there. Um, the pink wouldn't work against Crystal Palace. The blue wouldn't work against Cr uh, Crystal Palace. So you have to play in black. Get a white kit. That would be the the contrast was hor was hor horrible, but yeah, um, they get um, uh, the one nil Leicester after Corker, I guess. I think Suyuncu is his name, Turkish uh, the uh, defender, who basically is sliding into this header and <laughs> makes it one nil. I think right before there was already a big chance for Leicester to score. Crystal Palace comes back, but not really into the game, and um, Vardy. Uh, seals the deal, makes it 2-0 for Leicester. I saw that Spurs again played only a 1-1 and that Son got a red card for a leg-breaking tackle, something like that. Um, Hellas Verona was a much bigger story. There was uh, the first half, uh, when I saw a lot of highlights, um, a penalty given that uh, with a red card for um, uh, the penalty was given for Verona and then in the replay you can see that the pressure defender is clearly playing the ball right before the attacker and it was no penalty uh, Hellas takes then the lead through an uh, 18 year old um, via header was actually nicely played and then the Hellas fans do themselves again some do their reputation just justice by really riling up Balotelli who actually had hit the bar in the first half already uh, Monkey chance, all the thing. Balotelli, you can see he's there, uh, we're working, and then his fuse goes, rightfully so. Uh, you have to say, uh, take, uh, takes the ball, slams it to its the um, uh, fans, and wants to walk off. And I think it takes the effort of all the t his teammates, the Verona players, to keep him on. Um, why the, the game got suspended, but I you know, I didn't listen to it. I again protocol, blah 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 blah. I actually would have loved if he just really walked off. He would have got suspended or, or whatever. But really, I mean, I think his action was strong enough. Verona gets the two two nil at the point where you know I actually do like Hellas Verona. Uh, I have to say, I also do. Brescia is also one team. You know, I don't have a strong association to it, but at that moment, I really want. Uh, pressure to actually get at least a point or um, Balotelli to score a goal and, and you know maybe even get get the winner. Verona gets the tunnel right there after Balotelli with a screamer makes it 2-1 but you know didn't celebrate or whatever uh, was not his 
everything for me then moved over to uh, Lask Austria, um, which had a very lively start with Lask taking the lead from um, corner, which was given for offside. Right on the other side, then uh, Monshine had a gl glorious chance that he put wide. Um, and then Austria's defense was completely in disarray and Raftl could score because Austria cannot clear the ball properly. By the way, I'm wearing my wife's last jersey, uh, which is the one that we wear in the league, except they have it now just This is the one that we started with, with the gray straps that is a little bit more in tone with the sponsor because of the side stripping here. That is correct. But because of fan protest, it's got adjusted to be Blackstrap, which looks honestly more like a Lask jersey. But this one is now the one that we beat Basel in, so still wearing it. I think it's it's not the best Lask jersey ever, but I actually like the way it looks. Then, then Lask kind of sat back a little bit more. I think they took the lead. They know there's a big game coming up. And Austria could get a little bit more of the game, actually had a good chance, but Lusk was always dangerous. In the second half, I think the coach said, okay, guys, gets cracking, uh, and Austria, there was nothing there any, 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 anymore. It uh, should have been 2-0 much sooner than when Filipovic, in the best way that uh, a super midfield player walks through the defense, I mean, a defending... Uh, was very sketchy, but he, with a tap around the goalkeeper, and then from a very acute angle, puts it in to nil Lusk. The Austria fans seemingly didn't like it. They were already protesting against the um, management or, or whatever, and then they let off flares and smoke bombs, and the game had to be suspended from, for those idiots. I hope they find them. Uh, there's a reason I don't want to go to Austria games anymore. The Austria fan base is one of the worst in uh, uh, in Austria. I have had to say, rapid fans get off on the stick. They're also not, they're also not, no, not, not, not bad, but I have to say, I personally had have had worse uh, experiences with Austria fans. Lask, 15 minutes break, Lask gets the win. Not, not my hap, 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 they could have made it 3 0, but Austria then also had a good chance. At the same time, I also had um, Osasuna against Alaves on, which ended with a 4 2 win, kind of a very live, lively game. Uh, then a little bit of Parma uh, at Fiorentina, Giovini took the, uh, takes the lead with a wonderful chipped ball. Uh, Castrovilli equalizes for Fiorentina. I think the Right result there, and uh, yeah, NFL I did watch as well, and then the craziness became, I put Milan on the main screen, the NFL main on the small, and then on my laptop I had uh, Granada Real Sociedad. Um, Granada Real Sociedad, although it's the lay, lay later game, was a lively game in the first half from what I could tell, although I don't like the Sociedad uh, green jerseys, Real Sociedad taking the league, but then from a very swervy free kick. Granada gets the equalizer. Um, the game completely dies down. I thought about it. But I mean, I didn't watch my. I watched my, mostly Milan. But I really could tell that um, it was not 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 a great game any, anymore in the end of the eighty eighth minute. Um, Rasiat ends up two one winners and are now level on points with Barcelona and Real Madrid. So. They get back into the mix. Milan. Actually, they played well. I have to say, they played really well. It was a lively game. Um, back and forth, they had chances to take the league. Back at time, looking at you. You should have made it. Uh, and then, yeah, Giro Immobile does what Giro Immobile does. Um, right at the point where I really thought, yeah, Milan could take this. I mean, I, it was open. Uh, you had a chance. And on the other end, uh, cross in and Thierry Mobile makes it 1-0. And it seems like a real blow. However, Milan responded well and got the equalizer when uh, Thierry Hernandez puts the ball in. That maybe Piontek touched with the foot and put it on the chest of Bastos. Or it just went straight to the chest of Bastos. And it went into the net. 1-1, uh, three minutes later, 27th minute. So, um, and then, I have to say, in the second half... At least the first half of the second half, as you know, I think in quarters very, 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 very often, um, Milan was the better team. 
they could have scored, they had all the opportunities. I mean, it was not great chances, but they actually played well. I actually enjoyed watching Milan for once. It's just that then in the um, two or two, 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 the end, there was a period where Lazio, you know, had like corners and, and, and so on. Donnarumma needed to get in. Yes, then Lazio came, but that day Lazio gets the winner from a counter-attack of all things that I didn't see. And it's the first time that Lazio wins at San Siro at Milan since 1989. And back then they won because of uh, Paolo Maldini on goal. It's really hurt, I have to say. Uh, but I'm a little bit more optimistic. I think for the first time I saw an identity with Milan there. They just need to get the wins. I just don't see it happening in the next two rounds at Juventus, international break, Napoli at home. I don't see there's much coming. Well, it's a little bit of downer to the end of a pretty cool weekend for me. Lask won. Milan did not. That's how it goes. Anyway, let me know what you thought about the games that I was watching or any other games. Please drop a comment below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.